Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 296, season 12. Today's date is January 17th, 2024. And welcome to the show. Uh, yes, it's been a, quite a while since I've done a podcast episode. I think it was last Sunday, not this past Sunday, uh, the week before. So on uh, today's program, I'm going to talk about... Uh, this is something unusual. Uh, I will discuss my great uh, grade school class reunion that happened this past weekend. And uh, I had a lot of good time. And then I will talk about uh, two uh, actors that passed away uh, last week. Uh, actor Bill Hayes, thus known as Doug Williams from Days of Our Lives. And also actress Joyce Randolph from The Honeymooners. Uh, yeah, she was great in that show. And uh, I'll talk about my memories of watching them on TV. I'll talk about their biographies and, uh, and some more. We'll see. Okay, uh, right now the program we're going to a commercial. And this program is brought to you by Cal Can Cat Food. <laughs> I remember this. this. And this commercial is from 1980. So sit back and relax. And I'll be right back with the show, folks. Thank you. There's a sound a cat makes when she's really happy and healthy. And there's a way a cat looks when she's really happy and healthy. To keep your cats looking good and sounding good, feed them CalCan. CalCan's got all the vitamins and minerals and protein a cat needs. It's so nutritious. It's like getting a multivitamin in every can. Now that's the sound of a healthy cat. Cal can. It's like getting a multivitamin in every can. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Cal can. Uh, this, this company uh, started, uh, actually, I'm sorry. It, found, it was founded in 1936 in McLean, Virginia. And uh, it was a brand of cat food. And it was owned by the American company, Mars, you know, that made uh, candy bars. <laughs> and uh, and then it moved to uh, Los Angeles. And then uh, it expanded, became very popular. Remember the commercials for that. And then in 1989, it changed its name in the United States from Calcan to Whiskas. And that's remained to this day. And then because Whiskas was in Europe, Calcan was in in uh, uh, the United States. So, and right now, it's also made also in McLean, uh, Virginia as well. And it, the, the company is called Pedigree Food, Pet Foods, excuse me, like that. And uh, I remember the commercials uh, very well with Calcan. They also made dog food. They did that. And uh, so that was well, when you hear that cat purring in the commercial, you know, it reminds me of Eartha Kitt from uh, as Catwoman from Batman, you know, <laughs> first thing came to my mind. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's good. So, uh, you know, right now, uh, you know, pet food today is. There's all kinds, you know, organic, healthy, you know, so like that, you know, pets are treated like uh, members of the families. So that's nice. That really is. That really, I've uh, never, I owned a cat when I was very little. My, my brother had one. His name was Precious. Unfortunately, he ran away. And my brother was devastated. So, you know, and uh, my, my parents were dead said against it they don't like pets like that and we never owned a dog either so well uh i don't want to go into a long story about me with the dog so you know so uh yeah you never know you never know about that okay at the beginning of the program i mentioned i'm going to talk about my uh grade school class reunion this happened this past weekend also i'll do my tributes to actor bill hayes and actress joyce randolph Okay. And uh, 
I just want to mention one thing. Uh, the reason I didn't do a podcast episode this past week uh, is it was so cold. I didn't have time and uh, it was a little hard. So, and I had some things going on, but I have time t- today. So that's good. And besides, the weather is getting warmer, starting to. The temperatures are starting to rise a little bit. Yeah, it's still cold. It's going to go up to like 18 or 20 degrees, which is great. But, you know, the warm up won't start about the week, like Sunday, you know, like 21. And then next week is uh, Monday, you know, Monday, uh, the rest of the week, and probably the following week of that. It's going to be warm. It's going to be nice. 30s and 40s. Oh, it's going to be nice. And melt that ice. Good, because I got to go out to dinner with the uh, with my friends next week. <laughs> it's going to be raining. I'll take the rain. It's okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I apologize for being off subject for you know for this podcast, but you know I had to talk about my re- my reunion this past Saturday. Uh, it was uh, for the Correas Elementary School. I attended. I attended from first grade to eighth grade. Um, from 1969 to 1977, it was our 47th, uh, you know, since we graduated. So let me give you a history of that, and then I'll tell you what happened at the reunion. Uh, when I joined Facebook back way back a long time ago, and, you know, everything was everything's getting into shape, uh, then groups would come, and then I started a group called... Uh, Korea School, uh, sorry, Korea Elementary School, class of 77, you know, 1977. And then uh, more, and they had added people in Facebook who, and then the, the years went by, they, jo- they joined the social media uh, uh, account, and then more people came. There's still others that don't want to do it, I, which I can understand. So I put that in the group. I added more people that weren't in my class, but that's okay, you know. Um, it's no big deal. Then I added photos of the class photos, uh, memorabilia that I had, like the autograph book. Uh, there was a ribbon. There was a uh, newspaper articles, invitations, old class photos when we were in school, like that. And uh, this got me going, you know. And then uh, one day I suggested, why don't we do a reunion? Because we never had uh we never had one and you know over the years uh i've always seen people in my class through fe- greek festivals or at church you know one you know one person at a time you know not together and uh we haven't been together in a room since 1977 since we graduated you know and I kept suggesting it, and I begged, and I pleaded and to people. And, you know, they said yes. They all said yes. But, you know, they never, it never came through, and uh, I was disappointed, you know. And But I kept trying. I kept trying, you know, like that. So about two or three years ago, a classmate of mine who was not on Facebook called me on the phone. And he said, Pete. We got to have a reunion. I said, okay. I've been doing this for a long time. He was unaware of this. <laughs> so uh, we'll get together. And we tried and tried for two or three years. Like he, he said, we should get one to do it at the Greek festival, you know, at St. Constantine and Helen, where the church I attend, uh, but didn't pan out. And uh, everyone's busy, you know, uh, everyone has. Everyone's married. They have children. They have their jobs. They go to Greece. They, you know, they go to parties. You know, it's hard to get everyone there. A little difficult. Then, um, so uh, a couple few years later, a couple years there, yeah, a couple years later, uh, I was invited with a couple of friends of mine from school in my class, and they want to get together for breakfast. And I said, okay. And three of them in my class, they were in my class and says, we got to do a reunion. I said, okay, yes, we want to do that. And that we've been getting together. Uh, We're going to get together next Tuesday. Again, we're going to probably talk about the reunion. And uh, we kept trying and trying. And so we tried to, 
so yes, we're going to try to set a date, you know, at the time, you know, set a date with a place and all that. Um, so, um, what was it, last year? I think, yeah, last year we got together with a few more classmates. You know, we had a meeting and we discussed it, you know, and uh, we, had, we had to get the list of the classmates, not just the kids that graduated with us in 1977, but there were other kids that left, you know, and they only stayed there for like one year, two years, three years, but they're invited. I mean, they're entitled. They were part of the class. So at first, uh, a couple of them said, oh, why are we doing that? And I go, listen, they were part of a class, you know, and then they reluctantly agree. So that's okay. That's fine. So about last year, around what, November or December, uh, someone in, in my class took it over. We found the date and the, and the place, and it was January 13th, and right in the middle of a cold snap. <laughs> that didn't matter. That's all right. So we got... Uh, they wanted uh they uh the person asked me to get their text you know text you know their cell phone numbers their emails and text everybody everyone i could think of i tried to search people i did my best i did my very best and uh the responses were pretty good um some didn't answer some uh were couple of them were out of town they couldn't make it you know they couldn't because of the flights or they were busy and uh some had to work and uh so to tell you the truth you know on that day saturday i was so nervous you know i was getting ready you know I was, took a shower and you know, i was shaving and all of a sudden in the bathroom i felt like an anxiety attack you know oh my god i'm gonna see these people my head was like bit sweating and my body felt very warm but it lasted like about a minute i guess it was just nerves because i'm ner i was nervous and then it, it just went away and then when i got there it was gone it was gone it was just uh, i felt so uh it felt nice so i arrived at the restaurant and uh i saw most of the people some people arrived already you know because a few lived a far away you know and hung up my coat and i hugged them i you know they kiss we say hello it's been ages it was nice and uh then more people came uh we had a good turnout you know some were out of town i, I saw my friend uh who lived out of town i i don't see him often you know but uh i'm glad he did he was only there for a few years and he hasn't seen most of the kids for ages a long time you know, and then he went, he said, no, Pete, let me guess who they are. And I said, okay. And sure enough, most of them remember him and he remembered them and that was wonderful. So we sat down and we had dinner. We talked and reminisced, you know, I didn't get to talk to much, pe many people. I did. I did my best. And, uh, so uh you know but it started from six o'clock and then we had to get out of the restaurant at 9 30 which kind of stunk because <laughs> i wish we had more time we could have hang up hung out more and uh it was great you know but at least they gave us time to say goodbye and pack up everything you know and we had to go out and warm up our cars you know because we had to leave and uh it was beautiful it really was beautiful. And, uh, you know, everyone, and then we took some photos, um, me sitting on the floor. I should not have done that. <laughs> you know, when I was, a, when I was in school, I always did dumb things. I was I just doing this for old time's sake. <laughs> then, um, uh, we took a group photo. It's on my social media accounts. If you look at it, that's a beautiful photo. Uh, I every time I look at it, I just, gives me a nice feeling and uh you know someone said you know you got to thank Pete Costanz for put, you know not putting it together but get the ball rolling I was very touched and I told everyone thank you and they all said goodbye to me they hugged me and they said oh thank you for bringing us together you know after all this time and I said you're welcome you know this is what we want I couldn't believe it was happening and then uh so I got in my car and uh went home on the way home i was in tears i was very sad
because I was, it was sad. It was, I was sad. It was, it was sadness with, with full of joy that I was see. I saw him, everyone mostly again. And, uh, that was a beautiful evening. I'm very touched. I still am in a way, you know, I still have, I, every time I think about it, it's, uh, it was wonderful. Um, like I said before, a lot of people didn't show up, but, uh, According to a couple of people, they want to play a second one in August at the church, you know, at St. Constantine. I said, fine. If they want to arrange that, they can do that. And uh, we'll see what happens. But that's seven months away. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, summer. Some people go to Greece. Some people have parties. They got, uh, you know, they have uh, things going on. Well, but. We can manage, you know, and some people who didn't attend the first one have the opportunity to attend the second one. All right. Of course, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, you know, because uh, it seemed like everyone had a good time. It, the thing was, it wasn't, they forgot about the cold weather. It didn't matter. It's just seeing everyone. They were so happy. They were laughing, reminiscing, all that. Oh, that was beautiful. That really was beautiful. Yeah. It was a great party. I'll never forget it. I really won't. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I'm just a little emotional <laughs> like that. But I had to talk about this on my podcast. I know it's not really Chicago land in a way, but, you know, it's sort of related to it. But uh, this is from my personal you know, uh, I would just say it, uh, you know, from, from me talking about this, my experience. Okay. Right now I'm going to talk about, uh, actor Bill Hayes. Uh, a lot of people have known him as Doug Williams from days of our lives. He's, he was been on the show since 1970. And uh, he played that character all the way to the end, you know, until last year. And uh, I'll give you his biography. So he was born William Foster Hayes III, born June 5th, 1925, in Harvey, Illinois. So he's a Chicagoan. Yeah. And he graduated uh, Thornton Township High, uh, I think 1942, I believe. I could be wrong. And then, uh, then he got drafted after that. And, uh, you know, in World War II, he was, and then he was trained for, uh, to be a fighter pilot, fight, fighter pilot, excuse me. And, uh, so, and then, you know, he was awarded for the American campaign medal and the World War II victory medal. Oh, very nice. So he has he was he was given a choice either re-enlisting in the Navy, which he did enlist, but he uh, he he chose to be a civilian. He didn't want to do that anymore, which is fine, because uh, he uh, because he was a he was in college at the time where he got drafted. So he was at DePaul University in um, Indiana in Greencastle, and then uh, then he went to. Uh, And then he graduated there, and then uh, then he started as a singer, you know, and he was a good singer, and he appeared in TV shows. Uh, the earliest uh, TV appearance he appeared was your show, Shows, that starred Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca. And uh, and he started in his and he started in a movie. His first movie was uh, "Stop Your Kill Me" from 1952, which uh, I never seen that movie. I gotta check it out. And uh, what other thing he was famous besides "Days of Our Lives"? He recorded uh, a song called "The Ballad of Davy Crockett," and <laughs> uh, that was about when Davy Crockett, the frontiersman, uh, had. Disney created a TV show that lasted about four episodes and it went nuts. And all the kids wore that coonskin caps. And uh, that came out in 1955. And that hit the uh, number one in 
for five weeks and it was uh it was uh, phenomenal like that and uh, I'll, uh, related to the honeymooners there's an episode where alice cramden is babysitting and uh ralph got suspicious because she he thought she was fooling around but in fact she was babysitting and uh he was yelling at the door and the kid comes out and you know woke him up and uh, the kid said, gee, I didn't know Davy Crockett was so fat. <laughs> so that's probably that's what probably from the TV show. <laughs> I had a friend of mine who was a huge Honeymooners fan. He had no idea about it. I explained what that was. <laughs> and uh, so that song, he's, he was a great singer. And he was on Broadway. And then on Days of Our Lives, which he got hired in 1970, he was uh, introduced as a convict and also a lounge singer. So uh, he was friends with uh, Victor Kyriakis, played by John Aniston. He died last year. And then uh, he opened Doug's Place, you know, his restaurant. And then he met his wife, his second wife, uh, uh, Julie, uh, Julie Williams, played by Susan Seaforth. And then he got married. 1974 and they've been married ever since uh then he came and then he was staying on the show back and forth back and forth my favorite uh, towards the end uh, he got possessed by the devil <laughs> which i thought was pretty funny <laughs> i like that and uh you know he he was a, and then he had been a uh he been a guest on Jimmy Fallon and Johnny Carson, you know. Did a few acting. He had a few acting roles. Did some game shows and all that. And you know, and then uh, he was ninety eight years old, you know, and still acting. But he didn't walk around. He just sat down, you know, most of the time. He filmed the scenes, but his mind was sharp and alert, which is amazing. And he learned his like He only had a few lines, but he was great. Like that, and wonder and wonderful. And him and his wife appeared on Time Magazine in 1976. They made the cover. You know, they were one of the most uh, popular couple in soapdom. You know, the soap opera. And then he passed away on January 12, 2024. So that's that's sad. So right now, I'm going to play a commercial of him featuring uh, Florence Henderson from 1958 in an Oldsmobile 88 uh, commercial. I don't know if it was called Delta then. Delta 88, but they called it 88. So uh, he did a couple commercials, you know, with Oldsmobile. So here they are, uh, Bill Hayes and Florence Henderson in a 1958 Oldsmobile 88 commercial. Okay, so sit back and relax, and I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. There's the 58. No, that's 57. Gee, it's sure hard to tell the difference with some cars. There's the 58. I'll say. It's easy to tell a new Oldsmobile. America's top experts on new cars. Mm -hmm. And they're so right. You don't have to look twice to tell that this is a 58 model. No, but you have to look twice to believe the low price tag on this 88. That's right. You get more big car luxury and styling for your money in an old 88 than in any other car. And performance, too. That new rocket engine delivers all the power that you could ever use. Plus the biggest advance in fuel economy in Oldsmobile's history. Why don't you see your dealer about an 88? Low price? Economy of operation, high trade in value, it really pays to get out of the ordinary and into an old. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial uh, with uh, Bill Hayes and Florence Henderson for Oldsmobile 88 from 1958. Uh, as for his character in Days of Our Lives, um, I'm sure they're going to kill him off. I mean, you know, unless they replace him, I doubt it. I don't think so. Uh, but, you know, they taped the show months in advance, so they won't, they'll do a storyline about his death probably later this year. You know, and that's devastating, you know, for his wife. And the, and the cast members, you know, my mom watch, has watched him since the 70s, late 70s. She still watches to this day. I watch it too, sometimes with her. 
you know, because she asks questions. <laughs> she goes, what's going on? What are they doing? You know, and like that. And uh, so, you know, she's hooked on the show. She loves the show you know, like that. So, and she loves them. She loves Bill Hayes. You know, she heard him sing on the show and all that. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, my condolences to the family. You know, yeah, that's uh, that's sad. Okay. Right now, I'm going to talk about actress Joyce Randolph, and she, best known as Trixie Norton, on the classic TV series The Honeymooners, <laughs> which a lot of people love. This show. It's like this show has taken a life of its own. It's just it's a ama- it's amazing. You know, because there's a Facebook group. I have a Facebook group about the show, and all I see is comments and situations, you know, the lines from it, and it, it's hilarious. And you start laughing at those. And oh, it's, I spent a, I sp- one afternoon, I read like about for a couple hours, and I'm laughing at all this. It's just, it's, it's hilarious. And, you know, but, you know, some people just uh, push it aside because it's black and white and it's old. But, you know, it holds up well and it's funny. It's just funny. You know, it's it's a it's a masterpiece of comedy. It's what it is. So anyway, I'll give you a her biography. I'll give you a talk about my memories of watching her. So here we go. Uh, She was born Joyce Cirola on October 21st, 1924. Uh, she was born in Detroit. Uh, her father was a butcher. I remember this from a, an interview. I saw this on YouTube. She described her family, and uh, she and then she did some acting. Uh, then she went on tour on stage, and then she took. Then she went to New York. Uh, she moved there in 1943 to pursue an acting career. Took some roles on Broadway. And did some early commercials on television, you know, way back. And then uh, in 1951, she was seen in a commercial for Clorets, you know, the breath freshener, by none other than Jackie Gleason. And she was, and he asked her to appear in a sketch on his TV show was called Cavalcade of Stars. Uh, that was not on CBS; it was on the Dumont Television Network. That's another network. And uh, so he, later on, he cast her as Trixie Norton. And uh, she was the second Trixie. I think the first one was, uh, who was it? I think uh, Elaine Stritch, yeah, an actress. But uh, that didn't go well. And uh, so uh, she did the part well. You know, the funny thing about the early episodes, she was featured more than the classic uh, 39 episodes, you know, the starting 1959 to 1956. And uh, so uh, there are some classic episodes. And in the, like I said before, in the classic 39, she wasn't on every episode, you know, and she didn't have much lines in there, she, you know, she, but uh, one of the f- most famous things on the show about her is like, uh, what was it? Well, oh yeah, with the her potato salad. <laughs> she wasn't on the screen, but you know they had a new neighbor, Carlos, Carlos Sanchez, the the mambo instructor. And Norton came down and wanted to welcome to the building, and he brought Trixie's potato salad. <laughs> and they still do this on Facebook. <laughs> and then uh, one of his, one of her famous lines on the show is that when Ralph appeared on the ninety nine thousand dollar answer. You know, the quiz show based on the $64,000 question. And she told Alice, you are the, you're the biggest thing on television. <laughs> she said that. Yeah. And then, oh, the other one was like when they were visiting a, a friend of uh, Ralph's. He worked at, for the bus company and they went to visit his apartment. It was Rita. And that's why kind of sexy lady. And she said to Alice, you know, on the bus, there were only two seats. And you know who gets to sit in those two seats? And Alice responded, Ralph. (laughs) There's so many classic lines. It really is. And then uh, when the Honeymooners went off the air, then they went back to the variety show. She did appear on that, you know, and they did Honeymooner sketches. 
Uh, then when Jackie Gleason moved the show to Miami, uh, she did not, uh, didn't want to come. She didn't want to move, you know, and, uh, she didn't want to do that. So, uh, Jane Keene took over the Honeymooners hour long episodes. It was in color. They had musicals. It wasn't the same. It was kind of weird seeing that, but they had some funny bits. Uh, so after that, she was known as Trixie Norton all through her life, all through her life. She was that. And, uh, so it was, say, I wish she was featured more. I, I really believe she, I, I liked her a lot. I, I enjoyed watching her. And, uh, so, so that is interesting. So right now I'm going to play a promo for the lost episodes of the honeymooners that, uh, premiered on Showtime in 1986. Yeah, I remember this one. So it's very short, brief, you know, quick. So here it is with Joyce Randolph for the promo for the lost, uh, for the lost honeymooners episodes, excuse me, that premiered on Showtime. And, we'll, and when I come back, I'll wrap up the show. Okay, folks? Thank you. Hello, I'm Joyce Randolph. You've heard about the Honeymooners, the Lost Episodes? Well, you're going to get a chance to see them only on Showtime. The Honeymooners, the Lost Episodes, not seen in 30 years, only on Showtime. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the promo for the lost episodes of uh, Honeymooners and uh, that in Joyce Randolph did a promo of that, you know, about the lost episodes. I don't have them on, I don't, I haven't bought the DVD yet, but I've watched them on TV. It, it's great to see them earlier, but they seem to me louder and uh, kind of eh, strange. They're good, but you know, but someday I'll buy them, you know, just to complete my uh, collection. Uh, you know, but Trixie is featured more in there. She really is. You know, so that's, that's the reason why. And she get she interacts with, uh, Ralph Crandom a lot in that. So that's, that's very, uh, interesting. You know, I've watched the honeymooners since I was a kid. Uh, first time I watched them was on channel 32 and WFL D TV in Chicago. It was on 10 o'clock. Uh, sometimes I didn't because my my parents want to watch the news. And then later on, it stayed in Channel 32, like around 10, 10.30, and everyone started watching. The reruns were endless, you know, and just like Gilligan's Island, Brady Bunch, The Three Stooges, etc. And it's on MeTV now, you know, in Chicago. So people uh, quote the lines. They still do. My brother and I still do that. I have a friend who does that too. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's a classic show. It's not one of my favorite shows. Uh, it is one of my favorites. Excuse me. My favorite is I Love Lucy. It's always been there, and uh, but it is one of my is one of my favorites. Uh, I love it. I have it on Blu-ray. You know, it's just, it's just funny. It's really funny. It really is. So, uh, so Trixie was the last one, last surviving cast member. You know, she lived so long. You know, she seemed like a very nice lady. You know, and she appreciated her fans, from what I heard. You know, I don't think she remember everything <laughs> what she did, but but uh, she was very. I heard she was very kind. You know, signed autographs and you know attended the. Uh, conventions you know the ralph one and all that so yeah, my condolences to her family yeah trixie norton will live on and now she's reunited with the the rest of the gang like that okay that'll be all for today uh do a recap of what i talked about i talked about uh my uh my grade school class reunion this past weekend also my tributes to actor bill hayes and actress Joyce Randolph. And uh, this pop podcast will be published uh, later on today, uh, wherever pack podcasts are available, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, Breaker, uh, Overcast. Also, you can find it on my blog, Fan Chicago and Dog blog. Also on my YouTube channel, 
uh, do a search on YouTube and Chicago Land Stories. People still ask me, where do I find your podcast? Where do I find your podcast? Find it there. Hit subscribe. And then you'll get the notification of the latest episode. You can do is you can listen to previous episodes if you like. Help yourself, you know. Also, be sure to my social media: uh, Facebook, X, Instagram, Threads, uh, LinkedIn, and also Reddit. Okay, uh, probably do. I I'm almost sure I'll do another podcast this weekend. Yeah, we'll see about that. And uh, we're getting close to episode 300. Can't believe I did almost 300. <laughs> That's a lot for me. Oh, it's amazing. I even forgot what I talked about in previous episodes. I'm getting old, folks. <laughs> well, I'm 60. That's how it is. Okay. So this is Pico Sanchez, your host of Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Please stay warm. It's kind of sunny now, so that's good. Hopefully it'll w- it will warm up the, at the end of the week and then the following week, and it'll be nice. And uh, I hope everyone would not be crabby about it. <laughs> It's January, folks. That's the way it is. So, you know, just keep warm. Be Stay safe. Be healthy. And here is a little traveling music from Ray Rayner saying bye-bye-bye. And here's me saying bye-bye-bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye.